Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and is voted for by you guys in last week's poll, in the lead up to Godzilla vs Kong. Today, we're going to be taking a retrospective trip back to where the MonsterVerse began, chronologically, by looking at Kong Skull Island, before discussing what's about to happen in the upcoming movie. Hey, what happened with the war? Did we win? Which one? Uh, that makes sense. Kong has had quite a history in cinema. First introduced in Marion C. Cooper and Ernest B. Shuchak's 1933 adventure film King Kong, an often imitated classic praised for its revolutionary special effects, the film would go on to have two remakes and many offshoots that pitted the giant ape against an array of adversaries, including Godzilla in a 1962 Japanese film titled King Kong vs. Godzilla. Outside of the Japanese-inspired 60s films and the low-budget sci-fi channel-less movies, the main Kong films don't stray that far from the format that made the original so good. Man invades Skull Island, Kong falls for a female protagonist, Kong is abducted and taken to New York, before escaping to cause havoc and die in a tear-jerking finale. While this formula still has the potential to entertain, as seen with 2005's King Kong, directed by Peter Jackson, it's become predictable. The creators of Kong Skull Island realized this and set about creating a highly original take on the Kong mythology by making him into the guardian deity of Skull Island, the mountain who thunders death, the Titanus, Kong. After hiring Jordan Voigt Roberts to direct the film in September of 2014, Legendary Pictures and Warner Brothers sought Max Borenstein's expertise, who penned 2014's Godzilla to write the first draft. The aim was to avoid the Beauty and the Beast storyline that's become synonymous with Kong and the offensive depiction of island natives, in addition to needing to create a continuity between the worlds of Kong and Godzilla. Inspired by Apocalypse Now, which itself was based on Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, Borenstein wanted to set the film during the Vietnam War, but after rejection from the studio, he changed the setting to World War I, with the plot revolving around Tom Hiddleston's James Conrad, leading a rescue team to find his brother, who got stranded on Skull Island, looking for a Titan serum. John Gattins, Derek Connolly and Dan Gilroy were then added to make revisions. Keeping Max's core idea, they replaced the missing brother with Hank Marlowe, changed the setting back to the Vietnam War and added Monarch into the equation, before getting to work crafting the history of the island and all of its unique inhabitants. Before bringing Kong to the screen, the masterminds at Industrial Light and Magic spent over eight months designing him. The aim with Kong was simple, to make him into an enormous compelling anti-hero that looked real and displayed humanistic qualities that would allow viewers to empathize with him. When designing Kong, the team at ILM wanted him to be a tribute to his predecessors, yet at the same time to look less like a giant ape and more like a benevolent god. To this end, the team made him into a bipedal creature that walked in an upright position, hearkening back to the famous 1933 incarnation, while Kong's god status was attained as a byproduct of his immense size, as well as his acts of benevolence and wrath. The film begins in 1944, when two World War II fighter pilots, American Hank Marlow, played by Will Britton in the early scenes in John C. Riley's An Older Man, and Japanese pilot Gonpei Ikari, parachute onto an island in the South Pacific after a dogfight. There they continue their dispute in close combat, until being rudely interrupted by a barely glimpsed giant ape. While at this stage of the film, Kong is a sequence of blurred images and fast shots, as Skull Island progresses, we see every inch of Kong's grandeur, and can't help but marvel at his majesty. Unlike the Kong of old that was often portrayed as an oversized gorilla, standing at a height of 104 feet and weighing over 158 tons, the tall, bipedal and long-armed Titanus Kong is a sight to behold. Is that a monkey? Though he shares a common ancestry with apes, Kong is explained as being an entirely new superspecies beyond any existent categorization of life on the planet, leading Monarch to designate him and the other kaiju they discovered as Titans. After the 1940s shenanigans, the film jumps forward to 1973, where the head of Monarch, Bill Rando, plans a search for monstrous creatures on the recently discovered Skull Island. To help him with his search, he enlists US Army Lieutenant Colonel Preston Packard and his men, former British Special Air Service Captain James Conrad, and, for no obvious reason, anti-war photographer Mason Weaver. Once the researchers and soldiers arrive at Skull Island, they begin setting off seismic detonations to help map its topography and to prove Brooks's Hollow Earth theory of underground spaces that lead to a primordial land from whence the Titans came. This disturbance rightfully angers Kong, who attacks them and scatters the survivors into two groups. We just got taken down by a monkey the size of a building. Yeah, that was an unconventional encounter. 
Packard and his group search for a helicopter that contains a weapon that might be able to kill Kong, while the others, led by Conrad, stumble into the local population and come across Marlowe. Through Marlowe, we learn that Kong is actually a protector of the island, keeping everyone safe from subterranean reptiles called skull crawlers. Conrad and his group ride down the river with Marlowe's assistance and regroup with Packard, all the while being hunted and attacked by the island's creatures. Eventually, the group finds what they're looking for, leading to Conrad and Packard's confrontation over whether they should be killing Kong. What ensues is a race between Conrad and his group to save Kong, and Packard to kill him. But all of this posturing is rendered moot when the standoff is interrupted by a giant skull crawler that emerges from the depths to fight the king. Although Kong's ancestors had once ruled the island as benevolent caretakers, the emergence of the foul breed of apex predators known as the skull crawlers challenged their reign. The war that followed between the two super predators, which raged for millennia, would see the numerous skull crawlers lay waste to his entire species, leaving Kong as the only heir to a kingdom forgotten by time. This increases the stakes, making the already epic fight between Kong and the giant skull crawler personal. After proving that nobody had shit on King Kong, the film ends with a triumphant Kong watching as the survivors leave the island. I'm sure you would have already noticed by now that one of the biggest changes to this film is that Kong survives. Previous movies reveled in his heart-wrenching climactic death, but by allowing Kong to live, the film opens up a future full of potential, including one where he gets to fight Godzilla. I love this Kong. He's not a lonely ape aimlessly wandering a prehistoric land. He's the protector of all creatures within his kingdom. And not only does Kong put the defense of Skull Island as his first priority, but his confidence and will is so strong that he's willing to stand up to the other titans, as noted in the official Godzilla King of the Monsters novelization. In it, we discover that Kong was able to resist the alpha call of King Ghidorah, which awakens most of the other titans around the globe and bends them to his will. Judging by the post credit scenes for Kong Skull Island and Godzilla King of the Monsters, and the trailer for the upcoming movie, it looks as though these titan matchups have occurred multiple times throughout history, with different monsters trying to establish their dominance. Interestingly, the new Godzilla vs Kong trailer shows Kong wielding an axe that seems to hold back Godzilla's atomic breath, which will undoubtedly make the confrontation fairer, and might also be a window into the mysterious history of the titans. The atomic breath is Godzilla's greatest weapon, and one that Kong struggled against in the original confrontation. I'm not quite sure how it's able to absorb energy in the way that it does, but it's likely a relic that was used by his ancestors. Personally, I think that this new film will be a mashup of the 1962 Toho classic King Kong vs. Godzilla and the 1974 Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, the latter of which featured a mechanical version of Godzilla created by aliens, beginning a violent rampage before being confronted by the real Godzilla and his friends. While I'm not suggesting the presence of aliens in Godzilla vs. Kong, it's safe to say that Alan Jonah is likely responsible for the creation of Mechagodzilla. We also know that a new character, Ren Serizawa, played by Shunaguru, is entering the MonsterVerse. You may remember Ishiro Serizawa, who is the hero of King of the Monsters that bravely sacrificed himself to help Godzilla. Ren is essentially his son, but the trailer suggests that he might actually be responsible for helping Jonah build Mechagodzilla, perhaps as a response to his father's death. With all that being said, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Skull Island and your theories about the upcoming movie, so don't forget to share these in the comments below. Thanks to everyone who voted in last week's poll. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content, and if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by.